Hello and welcome to this introductory episode of my Loan With Me Op6 video series. So let me tell you what I'm going to be doing and why I'm doing it. Like I suspect a lot of people out there, the discounts on the Op6 pushed me over the edge to buying one. I wouldn't say it was an impulse purchase for me. I've been interested in FM synthesis for some time. I was very familiar with the Op6. It seemed a little bit expensive for what you were getting, but with the discount it seemed like a good, a good deal. I'm fairly familiar with synthesis in general. I've also put out a tutorial series using the Liven XFM on FM synthesis, so I'm quite comfortable with FM synthesis as well as other forms of synthesis. I had a look at the type of instructional content that was out there, and to me it seemed to fall into three or four categories. One of them was the sort of video manual category, where they go through every single feature and describe how it operates. The next one was sort of tips and tricks based, where it was little snippets or how to do a particular thing. Um, another one was really just patch walkthroughs. And um, the final one was more like a jam or a performance, which was supposed to be giving you some insight onto what exactly it sounded like. I thought that I would take a different approach here. Now, the tutorials I've done in the past have been done from a point of view where I already knew how to use the synthesizer quite well and I was articulating that. In the case of this synthesizer, I've read the manual completely, but basically I've just confirmed that it works. I haven't actually gone into any depth with it, and my intent is not to go into any depth with learning it except for in these videos. So from my reading of the manual and from my understanding of synthesizers in general, I've made myself a sort of syllabus that I'm going to use to go from the basics of this synthesizer to hopefully relatively complicated sound design that I might want to use. And hopefully you might want to use too. So my goal here is to allow you to follow along with my learning process and to get a full grip on how this synthesizer works. So as a little preamble, here's an unboxing. So in the box you get the synthesizer, you get a power supply, you get a little quick start guide, nothing particularly unusual. When taking it out I would say I noted that it was lighter than I expected, but it still feels reasonably sturdy. Uh, this is me booting it up for the first time. You can see it has the 1.0.4 firmware. This is something of a problem because a lot of new features were added in the 2.0 firmware. So I'm installing here the 2.0.1 firmware. This actually takes a couple of minutes in practice. Uh, I sped up the video a little bit so you didn't have to sit there watching it. The process was relatively painless, but in addition to updating the firmware, a new pack of factory presets were provided. With the original firmware there were 250 presets and those 250 presets were effectively randomly organized with the greatest hits at the front. What they've done in the new pack is they've added another hundred but they've reorganized them by type so I think this is much much more usable. So let me give you a quick overview of the panel and how the different parts of it operate. Um, I've already played on the keyboard a little bit, but it's a little bit slippery, it's a little bit wobbly, lost the expression feels fine, no aftertouch. I would say people have spoken about it like it's awful, and that's definitely not true. It's a perfectly serviceable and usable keyboard. For some of the things that this synthesizer can do, you probably want more keys, you probably want a better keyboard, but it's not that bad. Decent feeling pitch wheel, decent feeling mod wheel. I actually quite like that I can put my fingers underneath it. It's a good place to rest while operating these wheels, so that's quite nice ergonomically. These knobs feel reasonable. Fade is a little bit wobbly, a little bit scratchy, and not quite uniformly smooth, so it could be better. Surprisingly good feeling encoder there. Um, 
all the encoders feel reasonable. So a little bit about the UI, um, left hand control section, keyboard section, um, octave shift, arpeggiator, these buttons can relate to the sequencer or to your favorites, which we'll be going through. This is the transport control. You'll notice white text and gray text. If you press a button, the white text will occur. If you hold shift and press a button, the gray text is what will happen. The display is showing you a certain context, in this case, the algorithm context. And these six encoders correspond to the three by two array of things on the display. So the first one would change the algorithm. The second one changes the global attack. Okay, and then these are the effect levels. So these are your quick performance controls. Additionally, we have the operator mixer section where the color indicates whether something is an operator or a carrier or a modulator. The faders adjust the level. These adjust the tuning. The tuning goes all the way down to 101, 128th of the pressed note and all the way up to 32x. So this lower range is really more um, pitch tracking LFO range. So that's quite nice to see. So we have different contexts and we can move through the operators and look at those contexts. And then these are effect processor, filter, modulations. We have access to arpeggiator, sequencer, voice control, modulation matrix, and then other parameters and global parameters. Okay, so that's a quick overview of everything on the panel. But what I really want to do today is um, spend some time going through the presets. But I don't want to just go through the presets in order. There are favorites. In particular, there are four banks of favorites, A through D. Only the first three are populated. So I'm going to run through the sounds. But to make sure I don't spend too long on any of them, I'm going to put a timer, a counter on the display. So first one, A1. Rasp and static. I'll try and give you my impression as I go, but I'll have to move pretty quickly. Nice movement, nice velocity sensitivity, quite an interesting and unusual sound. Definitely a good start for showing you the breadth, a lot of effects going on. Interesting use of the filter, nice resonance on the filter. Comb piano, I guess, is a comb filtered. Sort of honky tonk sound when you turn the modulation up. Quite interesting, mod storm. I feel like I should have put a damper pedal in. Um, Classic lead, again, very effects heavy. Let's try turning the effects off. Still sounds reasonable without the effects, but they do add a lot to it. Let's go. Lots of movement going on there. Breezy pad. Up swirl. The arpeggiator is on. Nice change with the modulator, has this interesting swirl at the end. Interesting that this is not controlled by the sequencer or the arpeggiator. So it's the LFO giving us this movement. Tone wheel, I guess this is going to act like draw bars. Um, 
ghost voices. Interesting, very effect heavy. Ah, oh, this is using one of the user algorithms, Thick Screamer. down. Classic FM guitar sound, very nice. Okay, so this is using the way of splitting the operators across the keyboard. This seems to be a template sound. Okay, let's get to bank B. Lab coats. So let's see what this is. Nice sample and hold there. Dino Brass. Nice soft rounded opening, pretty good. Interesting, you can change the attack and turn something attacky like that into something more pad like. So it sounds like the mod wheel is adjusting the tuning of the operators there, quite interesting. CCMM Sin Lead. Snowball. Try turning the effects off. Still sounds interesting. That's pretty good going. Arpeggiated. Home strings, so let's see, maybe comb filtered again. Nice, very bold sound there. NOS or NOS. Tweets. Chip tuny vibe, nice use of effects, quite subtle. Metallic pluck. I like the expression with the velocity. Nice big bold um, sound, nice pumping. And Saint Marimba. Very effect heavy, try and turn them down. I feel like the effects are hiding a lot of what it can do. Impressive bass. But I feel like the effects... Let's try. I, 
think it has a lot to offer without the effects as well, but they, they tend to drown everything in them because it sounds impressive. So a detuned sign patch. Onto the third favorite bank, Distant Waves. Nice, nice movement with the mod wheel. Bit stab. Ah, we've already heard this one. Cycles. So the LFOs are not in sync there, which gives an interesting variation, which I quite enjoy. Oh, okay. Sounding like a guitar. Fun. I guess that's the amp modeling, this one. Turn it off. Six, shimmer and fold. Hybrid pluck. Interesting that you can hear the patches overlap as you change. That sort of hints towards multi-tombrality, but I don't think this synthesizer is actually multi-tombral, which is a little unfortunate. So the arpeggiator is driving this. Nice tombral variation with the mod wheel. Interesting variation. Op accordion. A quite unusual tuning change with the mod wheel. Interesting slap bass. Sort of hint of a guitar there, quite like it. So I think this shows you some of the effect type of sounds you can get out of this, and... And that's a chord, so I guess these are tuned to intervals. Okay, so <laughs> that's taken me through all of the uh, favorites. I think it's illustrated that there's a pretty broad range of sounds available. Obviously the presets use a lot of effects, but... I'm looking forward to really digging into the sound design here because I think it will be very fruitful and I think some of the traditional and not so traditional approaches to FM synthesis is going to yield some interesting results. So in any case, um, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it useful and more importantly, I hope you're going to join me for the rest of the series as I learn how to get the best out of the OP6. But in any case, most importantly, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and goodbye.